In today's video we're going to be covering a CT soft tissue neck with contrast and we're going to start off by just looking at the scout films. So here we see in the coronal plane and we're just going to take a quick look for any obvious abnormality especially in the superior thorax and the shoulders. Those are easy to miss on the cross-sectional images. And look uh, laterally in the sagittal view. Look for any obvious cervical spine abnormality or soft tissue swelling in the prevertebral soft tissues. We're going to move on to the cross-sectional images and I start off by just taking a quick scan through to look for any obvious abnormality. And we can see in this patient they were complaining of some uh, abnormality in this region as indicated by the metallic BB marker so we'll take a closer look at that a little later. But we're going to go ahead and start our search pattern so the first thing I do is examine the aerodigestive tract and that involves the nasal cavity, the nasopharynx, your, your adenoid tissues, adenoid tonsils, uh, the oropharynx and the oral cavity with your palatine tonsils here and here and your lingual tonsils, these are normal and you can't really see them. Into the hypopharynx, into the larynx, here's your epiglottis and your area epiglottic folds. And past the vocal cord into the trachea and also looking at the esophagus posteriorly. And everything looks pretty normal. So we'll come back to the top and evaluate the salivary glands. So the right parotid gland is normal left parotid gland, we can see a normal appearing intraparotid lymph node over here. We'll take a look at the submandibular glands on the left and on the right, also normal in appearance. We'll come down to the thyroid gland, right lobe, isthmus, left lobe, also normal. We'll come back to the top and look for any lymphadenopathy or abnormal lymph nodes. We'll look in the level 1 region. And we're looking in this general region over here and there isn't anything abnormal. We'll look on the other side. These are some normal appearing lymph nodes. All of these little things. Lymph node, lymph node, all normal and appearing. We'll look at the cervical chain for any abnormal lymph nodes and that's in this region over here and this region over here. We'll look at one side at a time and we'll look at the other side coming up. And there are no abnormally enlarged lymph nodes. We'll come to the bottom portion of the exam and evaluate the larger vessels of the neck. Here we're just superior to the aortic arch and you can see a pretty common um, a vascular variant. This is called a bovine arch with the left common carotid and the right brachiocephalic arteries sharing a origin. And here you can see the right brachiocephalic artery dividing into the right subclavian artery and the right carotid artery. Here is the left carotid artery and here is your left subclavian artery. So we're going to follow the carotid arteries to look for any abnormality and we're following the right common carotid artery and it's going to split into the external carotid artery and the internal carotid artery and these are a little difficult to evaluate due to the timing of contrast bullus but there's no obvious abnormality and here's the internal carotid artery entering the skull we'll follow the other side coming down your internal carotid artery and here's your external carotid artery. Oh, my mistake. We'll find the external carotid artery. Common carotid artery. And there's your external carotid artery and internal carotid artery. We'll look at the vertebral arteries so we can find the basilar artery up here and the two vertebral arteries. One is here. And again, this is a little hard to follow, but it's going to come into the foramen transversarium and extend inferiorly along these foramina in the cervical spine. 
again, a little bit difficult to follow, but its origin is the right subclavian artery. And we can do the same on the left, and again, the origin is a little bit difficult to follow, but we can see it over here, and it looks normal. There it is again. We'll take a look at the visualized intracranial contents. On most exams, they tend to capture a little bit more of the brain and also a little bit of the orbits. We don't have that here, but from what we can see of the brain, everything looks pretty normal, at least the posterior fossa. And we'll take a look along the spinal canal, look for any obvious spinal cord abnormality or neuroforaminal abnormality. <clears throat> These are your neuroforamina. This is your spinal cord within your spinal canal. And we'll just scroll all the way through and look for any obvious abnormality. Towards the lower portion of the exam, the evaluation is difficult because the patient's shoulders come into play and they limit the amount of uh, photons that penetrate the patient. And there's no obvious abnormality. So now we'll just take a look at the subcutaneous tissues posteriorly, look at the musculature, we'll take a look along the right side at the muscles and the subcutaneous fat, anteriorly, and then along the left, and again no abnormality. We'll take a look at the lung apices on the right and on the left. Sometimes you can pick up a uh, neoplastic mass or a pneumothorax. And we'll take a look at the trachea. Sometimes this window offers um, better ability to see any kind of filling defect within the trachea. And everything looks pretty normal here. So we'll come back up to the top and examine the bones. So here we can see the maxillary sinuses partially, and there's just minimal mucosal disease or mucosal thickening on the right here. We can look at the tympanomastoid cavity. Here's the middle ear cavity and the mastoid air cells. And these are filled with air, which is normal. We'll take a look at the osseous structures anteriorly. Take a look at the teeth, look for any evidence of periodontal disease. And there might be a little bit of periapical lucency over here and over here, but we'll take a better look at these on the sagittal views in just a moment. We're going to look at the posterior calvarium and skull base. Not much to look at here, but no obvious abnormality. And then we'll go through the cervical spine. and there's no displaced fracture, there's no aggressive osseous lesion, and we'll take a look at the superior ribs on the right, and the superior ribs on the left, the manubrium, and the clavicles. And you can see here, if you compare it to the scout view, how much more of the shoulders you can see compared to the cross-sectional views. So sometimes you can pick up a shoulder dislocation or a proximal humeral fracture uh, on the scout view that you wouldn't be able to pick up on the cross-sectional images. Lastly, we'll go to the sagittal view. And again, we're going to be evaluating the spinal cord and spinal canal. And again, some difficulty here because the shoulders are st starting to come into the uh, starting to come into the plane. These are blocking out the photons that would normally penetrate this tissue. And there's no obvious abnormality. Switch over to the bone window. We want to evaluate the uh, occipital atlas joint over here, and it's normally approximated. The densodontoid interface is normal and the facets are appropriately aligned, spinous processes are aligned, and the facets on the other side are aligned. The vertebral column demonstrates no abnormal alignment. They're all forming a nice line sitting on top of each other. 
vertebral body heights are normal. And then we'll take a look at the teeth again. Looking for any kind of periapical lucency or evidence of other periodontal disease. And the mandibular teeth look pretty good. We'll take a look at the maxillary teeth. And there's no periapical lucency, which you would see around the root of the tooth and those questionable lucencies we saw on the axial images over here and over here turn out to not be periapical but just around the crown of the tooth and this is a somewhat unerupted tooth there and over here so these are not periapical lucencies and this is not necessarily periodontal disease so we come back just to check one last time since the patient was complaining of some abnormality in this region and we take a quick look around it and there is no appreciable abnormality in the region of clinical interest. So this is a normal exam, CT soft tissue neck with contrast. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, just let me know and I'll try to get back to you. Um, if you want to be notified of any future videos, then subscribe to the channel. Thank you.